Hello, this is the Harp Report. Um, today I'm going to try to explain why California had the horrible drought and fires uh, in the summer of 2018 and fall. First we can see there's always these low pressures out here, out in the Pacific, and we have some kind of blockage off the coast of California that doesn't allow these low pressures to come inland and bring rain. So, you know, one thing to keep in mind though is that it's normal for California to have dry summers. Uh, here's a percentage in, in June. It gets less than 2% of annual rainfall here. And uh, if we go to July, you can see it's, it's also normally dry. In August, another hot, dry month. Then in September, there should be some rainfall starting here. So let's uh, look at the drought map. And as of end of September, even with the normally very dry summer, you can see California is just, uh, it's either abnormally dry or moderate drought. So what's causing that? Again, back to the blockage in the jet stream. It's never visible in the water vapor maps or the infrared maps, but it is, this feature that I'm going to show you is visible in the visible light mode. So September 25th, visible light mode. Zoom in on California. And we can notice some circular things forming here. Here's some circular arcs. And then an opening forms in the middle. Let me back up try to make this as visible as possible. There's some very odd things happening right here in the upper atmosphere. So you can see these arcs forming. It's actually a circle here. That's a nice little circle. And it sits there, it maintains itself until dark. So this is typical of the ionospheric heater. Back up to daybreak again. You know, it's dark, they can't do anything because there's no ionosphere. Now ionosphere's up. Now we start seeing some circular shapes. And a whole lot of rings. And this this location here corresponds with the blockage in the jet stream. You've got this low pressure and you've got a, a jet coming here and it has to it hits this blockage and then it splits. So let's look in this area south of San Francisco. So if we zoom in south of San Francisco there happens to be a little place called Pillar Point Air Force Station and there's a public beach called Mavericks Beach on the south side with a little road going there so the way to shut this thing down is you go to this beach with a fishing pole and a tackle box go to this west side here and I'll tell you which meter to buy before we go before I end the video so this is an absolutely gigantic it looks to be about 70 feet in diameter and if we look off to the side I think that this building here is a big diesel generator because there doesn't appear to be any power lines going to this thing and then look farther to the side here's a big diesel tank and how do we know it's a diesel tank because it's got the EPA mandated spill barrier around it so this is a big diesel tank. This is a big um, megawatt generator that runs the whole station. It's got the exhaust coming out the top. And the thing is, if you are going to go confront these people and say, "Do you know any? Do you know what you're doing? All this damage you're doing?" They're going to these these guys are assigned 
to keep the oil checked in the generator, uh, do maintenance and diagnostics on the computer systems and the satellite uplinks overnight, and to mow the grass. They don't know what this thing is doing, so don't go there and hassle them, because they, they're dumb. They don't know. Okay, so here's a couple of next rads, or they're monitoring the uh, feedback from the ionospheric heater. That's what this big dish is doing. It's got a, a big phased array antenna, multi-megawatt phased array antenna. And then here, this uh, it looks like a swimming pool, but I think that's probably where the old um, ionospheric heater dish was sitting. The reason these things have to be at the coast is because the sidebands will are so powerful that they will mess up all kinds of electronic devices. But that gives you the ability to walk down here, go fishing on this coast down here with a little handheld microwave meter, and to then have a log book of when this transmitter is running. So if we um, look down here to the south, again, you know, west shoreline access, public access. The rest of this is all fenced off and mowed. But you can come down here to Mavericks Beach and, uh, you know, set up your beach chair. You don't even have to go to the, near this dish up here. You could just use your handheld meter down here. And then you correlate when that thing is, is uh, transmitting and what happens to that low pressure out in the Pacific. Another thing here is uh, you got these two uplink dishes. So this is a classified encrypted data stream that some unknown party tells, gives, sends instructions to this uh, ionospheric heater dish and then all this stuff is automatic. That's why there's no people here. There's only a few maintenance people here. But here you have two big uplink dishes. Anytime you see there's two of something, that means it's mission critical. They have a redundant system. So if you think you're going to go uh, quiz the guy who mows the grass and that he's going to know that he's causing the California drought and fires, uh, you're barking up the wrong tree. The way to do it is to document when that damn thing is transmitting and then make that public. And what kind of meter do you need? This is what I would suggest. I've bought, I have no affiliation with this company, but I bought two other meters and one of them I sent overseas to a scientist who was under attack with some strange medical problems. And once he receives the meter, the medical problems go away because, uh, and I would not feel safe without having one in my possession at all times, but uh, they used to be about 130, now they've jumped up, and you're going to need this once the 5G rollout happens. And if you have any kind of um, smart meters in your neighborhood, you need this to see where is the lowest signal spot where you can sleep at night with relative safety. But they're really nice, they run off a 9 volt battery, um, they have a green, yellow, and red zone, uh, which is calibrated to the European microwave standard, which is the correct biological safety standard. And again, I have no affiliation with this company, but I have bought two other meters, and I love them. They're great. Very small, handheld, rugged. Um, and if I lived in that area, I would be down there, set up your beach chair, have a fishing pole with a fishing license and have that thing in your tackle box with a little log book so that uh, you can monitor and then at the same time you can also watch for these circular shapes on the uh, visible satellite image so we can see here okay if the uh, the pilot the pillar point transmitter is here they'd be heating a spot right about here and then we're seeing these emanations in the upper cloud deck uh, it's probably a marine layer here and you can see as the sun sets these concentric rings stay in one spot and I've looked at the um, pressure maps 
and there's no indication of why this would be happening right here. I'm going backwards. So, you know, daybreak, it's all clear. Just a marine layer, low clouds. Uh, look, we have some clouds moving in. That could cause some kind of rainy effect. So, wow, okay, so they heat, they heat the tip of the cloud bank and the clouds go away and we get a little bit of an artifact showing in the marine layer. Make it bigger. So this is, in my opinion, a high probability of what is happening to cause the Texas, uh, sorry, California drought and fires. And you might ask yourself, what, what kind of a science scientist would agree to participate in this horrifying program? Well, the scientists all agree that, that water vapor is a very powerful greenhouse gas. So what this kind of technology is doing, it's keeping the water vapor out of the upper atmosphere and they're thereby minimizing the, the heating at the surface. So that is the reason that they're doing this, but the side effect is horrible drought, horrible fires. And so you might ask, how can they possibly do that? Well, that's your answer. But I don't believe that at all. I think that clouds and rain are absolutely neutral for climate change. Let's look at the um, upper pressure maps now and see what they indicate. It's very odd. So at 18,000 feet, they're not showing anything abnormal in that area at, as far as geopotential height or movement up and down in the atmosphere. So the winds at 34,000 feet show something strange leading up to those uh, circles on uh, the 25th. So this is 12 Zulu and 12 Zulu is 5 a.m. So here we can be sure the ionospheric heater is not running. So we jump ahead. It's uh, 0 Zulu is 5 p.m. So this is also before they turned it on apparently. 5 a.m. It has not been turned on yet. You can see these these lines are nice and smooth and this is a low pressure here because it's a left hand turn. Now that the transmitter has been running all day long it is now 5 p.m. on the 26th and you can go back and compare it to the, the visible light map. Now we have this strange jog here. This is all confused. The computer doesn't know what to make of that right there. Okay, You see this V-shape? There's something abnormal going on there. And then we go from 5 p.m. back to 5 a.m. Smooths out. 5 p.m., but they're not running it on the 27th, I don't think. And now here's the current on uh, September 27. All smooth. If we go back to the time when they actually ran the transmitter, when we're seeing that anomaly in the rings, there's something happening at 34,000 feet that's not that the computer is having a problem figuring out. And actually you can see it, this stupid uh, cursor keeps popping up, but if you look right here, you see this boomerang shape. The boomerang shape actually makes a super sharp turn. Well, it's, it makes a... It's, it's very confused right there. The computer doesn't know what to, what to make of that. So it's well hidden, but it's not completely hidden and it only happens in the daytime and personally I would blame the closest SBX type transmitter and it's right here there's the center that is where they are heating the ionosphere and then causing that confusion on the computer map and if we look at it on the water vapor map, uns unfortunately we just don't see anything except that here's this this line of thunderstorms and they disappear. But if we go back to the overall picture you can see that a blockage right there is the key to this whole weather pattern keeping that low pressure from moving inland. 
Okay, maybe speed it up a little. And it all hinges on the California coast. So all you folks in the San Francisco area, buy yourself one of those electrosmog, Cornet electrosmog meters for 200 bucks, and then go down there. It's not even far from the city. I mean, here's San Jose, Palo Alto, San Mateo, San Francisco. It's just a, uh, here it is between Moss Beach and El Granada. It's called Mavericks Beach, a public beach. You can go down there and you don't even have to go close to this thing. If it's on, that meter will be pegging. It will be detecting that. And we don't know the frequency they're using, so make sure to get the meter that goes up to 8 gigahertz. Okay? And this is all a broken record. I've been saying this to you guys out in California for three years that if you just go up, find these transmitters, detect when they're going, when they're on, and correlate it with these low pressures being steered and destroyed, and you can shut down your drought. And you're going to find that California has a lot more rain because of how extremely warm the oceans are, um, at least the majority of uh, the Pacific is now very warm. And uh, so if you got 200 bucks, go buy that meter. You're going to need it when the 5G rollout happens, and you can also protect yourself from these smart meters if they're in your neighborhood. You could put up a piece of tin on the side of your house and deflect most of that energy away, because that those microwaves will will destroy your health. And also, if you got a couple of bucks, uh, I would so appreciate some po uh, support on Patreon so I can do this research full time. Thank you so much.